You want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth about sports in the state of Michigan? You can't handle the truth! Well, we're giving you the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast, the show that provides research and statistics about all the Detroit and Michigan sports teams, whether fans like it or not, and detects, exposes, and reveals actual and hidden facts and truth that the mainstream media doesn't want you to know. No junk, no entertainment, no homerism, no slappiness, no coddling, no pop culture, no conspiracy theories, no opinions, no shilling, and no fluff. Head over to our website, the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast.com. Follow us on Twitter, Periscope, and Instagram at Michigan underscore truth. And like and share our verified Facebook page, the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast. Also listen to us on Spreaker, CastBox, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts via iTunes, and Spotify. The Michigan Sports Truth Podcast does not represent or defame any of the teams it covers. It only detects, exposes, and reveals honest, actual and hidden truth, facts, and statistics about them. And welcome to another episode of the independent edition of the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast. I'm Taylor Phillips. Follow me on Twitter, Periscope, and Instagram at DT2Phillips. One quick announcement this week. The Staples Network is taking this Wednesday off, this week of Wednesday, August 14th off, so we won't be on it until the week thereafter on Wednesday, August 21st, with an Eastern Standard Time to be determined, whether it's 9.30 p.m. or 10 p.m., we'll further update you um, on our social media platforms, Facebook and Twitter. That being said, I shall get to the topics at hand. That one is long gone! What I've learned over the course of the last month, or after the Alavila extension signing, is that Tigers and Red Wings owner Chris Silich not only has missed the deadline for what, a, what was going on what was going to be a building on his own property of Woodward and I set and I 75 as a part of his entire district Detroit project. But he and his family have been planning to buy some property with a building project of their own in Farmington Hills. And they have added pizza slice shaped windows to their little Caesars headquarters building in Detroit. That's also not to mention last October on October 17th, according to a source from the Detroit Sports Rags, Jeff Moss, on our primetime edition, the first episode ever of the primetime edition on the Staples Network, Chris Illich's largest, large investment in turning the color of Little Caesars Arena's lower bowl seats from red to black to try to sell more tickets for those seats to the fans that have been tired of seeing the Red Wings play badly on the ice. That was, that was the last season of Ken Holland being the general manager of the Red Wings, by the way. So what all this tells you, people back to the main point is that the Illich family especially Chris Illich himself are spending way more money on their building facility work on the teams that they own are you kidding me don't you think I know that which are the Tigers and Red Wings to go even deeper Chris Illich and his family care more about their own buildings and themselves rather than the teams we love he does not care if they keep spending lots more of their own money on facility supplies for their own selves instead of even caring about either the products on the playing surfaces, whether it's on the ice or the baseball diamond, then I'm very convinced that Chris Illich has to sell at least the Tigers. (laughs) Could he also have to sell the Red Wings as well? That's the trick question, but it may be possible. The only thing I'll give Chris Illich the benefit of the doubt is for is for the firing of then general manager and current GM of the Edmonton Oilers, Ken Holland, as I mentioned before. But this leads us to the fact that the Illich family is the reason former Red Wings forward Sergei Fedorov's jersey number has still not been retired up at the Raptors at Little Caesars Arena yet. So don't blame the new general manager of the team, Steve Eiserman, for it. The Illich family is solely influencing everyone never to make that happen. That's why I want Chris Illich to sell the Red Wings as well. Will that happen, though? It might or might not. We'll see what the future holds for this franchise. Left side line, three, and he answers. According to NBA analyst Shams Sharania, the Pistons have signed former Los Angeles Lakers forward Michael Beasley to a one-year contract. At age 30, the 11-year veteran averaged 7 points per game, 7.0 points per game on 49.0% shooting. Wow. Oh, man! 
in just 10.7 minutes per game, which means he just hasn't got much playing time as of late with the Los Angeles Lakers. The Pistons, who just required him, could use him on the court more as a backup a backup power forward behind Blake Griffin. However, there's a con about Beasley that's off the court. Man, oh man, the fans on Twitter everywhere have ragged on his marijuana overdose in the past for a reason. Sharania, to confirm that, report reported a while ago that Beasley was suspended five games for violating the NBA's anti-drug policy. Another thing to note that's on the court is that Beasley and another Pistons acquisition for this summer, Derrick Rose, have been drafted one and two overall in the 2008 NBA draft. Now they're teammates. So that's all I have for this short installment of the Independent Edition. Another reminder that the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast is also prime time on Blog Talk Radio under Mancini Sports on the Staples Network. Again, like I mentioned before in our in my announcement, the Staples Network is off, so I won't be hearing I won't be on the Prime Time Edition until next week on, on Wednesday, the twenty first. But you can find it on the Staples Network. Listen online at Blog Talk Radio dot com slash mancini sports and if anyone is interested in sponsoring our primetime edition on the stables network please email our fine producer mark mancini at mancini sports at yahoo.com check out the show's new website the michigan sports truth podcast.com like its verified facebook page the michigan sports truth podcast and follow its twitter periscope and instagram at michigan underscore truth i'm taylor phillips signing off follow me on twitter periscope and instagram at dt2 phillips Thanks very much for listening and downloading and sharing. And remember, the truth is out there. The Michigan Sports Truth Podcast does not represent or defame any of the teams it covers. It only detects, exposes, and reveals honest, actual, and hidden truth, facts, and statistics about them.